want. Yes. We can be business casual or business regular. It's all good. But you're your your family, you've been here before. You've watched the you've watched the Vanderpump rules at Mikasa before. I have. We watched um, also the Super Bowl here. That's right. Oh yeah. Yes. That and was then uh, every Super Bowl halftime show. That's right. Yeah, the right when the cameras crapped out right before Rihanna's. Uh, yeah, and we were like, <laughs> I was like, damn, that's awesome. Someone's getting executed. <laughs> I, lo I love it when a, I love it when a plan comes together. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Folks, welcome to the Buff Boys. What's up? Matt Marin, Joe Gorman, our guest today from the Risque Business Podcast, Laura Sogar. Thank you for having me. What's look, up? look at this, look at this entourage I know. over here. Yeah. I feel like uh, <laughs> fucking Cinderella. <laughs> <laughs> they, they never, great. Yeah, they're never in such close proximity and not fighting, so you have a calming effect on, yes. on I, everyone. When That's I came why in, I came here. When yeah. I came into, I'm allergic to cats, so when I came in, Finn jumped on me, and then Bubs started coming up near me. Normally, they hate each other, but I think they teamed up to get me to have yeah. an allergic reaction. Like, All right, for this event only, we're going to fuck them up. To yeah. prove to everyone I'm Jewish, my <laughs> allergies <laughs> act up. <laughs> Well, let's go see a demonstration. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it'll happen. He'll just kind of go over, start sniffing around Matt, and then Matt will be like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's a good Matt. Oh, yeah, dude. What's up, Laura? How you doing? I'm great. I was just uh, sharing how I'm going to the box with Miss Kelly. Yikes. Yes. Later on. I the know. box. The is box. that is that in Brooklyn? Or no, in that Manhattan? is a Manhattan yeah. affair. Gotcha. Yeah. Yes. For those of you that are wondering, if you ever watched... Requiem for a dream. It's what happens to Jennifer Connelly at the end. Yeah, we have a big night planned. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a live it's sex been performance. Great knowing you guys. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's a live sex performance. Live sex performance. Uh, we're fans, you know. So gotta yeah. go watch. Gotta go check it out. Well, bring me back a t-shirt. We'll do. <laughs> <laughs> with stains all. If they have stained. the box t-shirts, yeah. you know I would fucking buy one. It'd be like <laughs> three a.m. I'd be like, give me that. Yeah, give me that. <laughs> I will. Must have. Nice. Yeah, so I'm doing pretty good. Got some Fuck comedy yeah. beforehand going oh, to that. Oh, double. D oh, that's right. You're at yeah, a Yeah, I've got house. a whole night. I'm, that's yeah. right. I'm you were, fired up right now. You must now. have had like a Diet Coke or something. I had a Gatorade right <laughs> before this. There you this. go. You Buff got boys. Home. Buff boys. Yeah. Yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, when I was sick earlier this week, I had a couple of Gatorade. I had those uh, Gatorade electrolytes. Oh, the, the ones that are just salt? No, the ones that have like the electrolytes, extra electrolyte. Uh, like Gat oh, oh. Gatorade is what they called it. <laughs> yeah. my yeah. Gatorolytes. Oh. Yeah. yeah, is it? I mean, is it just the electrolytes? Because I always have Gatorade when I have a hangover, and of is course. it just electrolytes are good for a hangover? Great for a hangover. Great to prevent a hangover. Mm. So Goals. if you drink Gatorade the night before drinking, yeah. or during the night as you're drinking, uh, the, the, either one. The point okay. is, that you just want to stay hydrated, like the, and it okay. helps with gotcha. all of that. Gotcha. Just the electrolytes. Yeah. yeah, I take the electrolyte powder and do a quick line. Yes, yeah, that is. <laughs> That's fun. Snorting that's like, electrolytes. That's, yeah. that's what you really got to do. Just do an electrolyte bump before I... That's yeah. a party trick right <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah. That's perfect. That's <laughs> you, I'm bringing some for the box. Dude. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, but yeah, Laura, you are like a fitness person too, right? I am yeah. a fitness person. I don't know if I can still hold that title, but I, I'll take it. Whatever. I mean, in the comedy world. In the comedy world, I'm a yeah, fitness person for in sure. the comedy I'm a world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Definitely in the comedy world. I used to swim. Yeah. Uh, for a very small sum of money, which is what they call professionally. Nice. Yep. And uh, it was great. Yeah. How did uh, were you a swimmer your whole life? I was. Was uh, that your main sport, or were there others? And then you landed on swimming. I specialized at. I started at five competing. Oh wow! So pretty early. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Damn. And I was um, very very large as a child. I grew really fast. Mm -hmm. I don't. No, I loved ribs. Maybe that had something to yeah. do with it. And um, so as a result, I was very good very fast. Yeah. So I was like, this is fucking awesome because I'm winning. Was I there a, was there that. a point where other kids like you stopped growing and other kids kind of started? You're still like yeah, big, yeah, yeah, but you're yeah. not yeah. like giant. Yeah, yeah. I think. Um, well, I used to be a lot bigger because I was much more muscular then. And uh, it was a lot. Yeah. I think in college is when it really starts to even out because mm. everyone's kind of like. Full grown, and by the time you're making like NCAA's and stuff like that, like yeah. all these bitches were big. Like did yeah. we were all yeah. like, we did, all got there. Did you go to college for swimming? I did. Nice. Yes, I <laughs> majored in swimming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard to get a job with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I majored in backstroke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a specialty in breaststroke. Actually, that was my stroke. Yeah. Nice. I know. Um, what college did you go to? University of Texas. Oh, you're. Oh, Welcome I think we home. talked. You're Longhorns. Yeah. Longhorns. Uh oh. Nice. That's I'd Matt's favorite 
football Co- team. My favorite college team. Oh, yeah. they're awesome. Yeah. So I, much um, fun. I wish they were better at football. But I mean, they <laughs> were pretty good this year. This year? Like, yeah. We were made like the final four. That's pretty yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. When my freshman year, they made the national championship. Um, delight. Was that the year against Alabama? Yeah. Uh, Colt yeah. McCoy. Colt McCoy. Then yep. he like, f- whatever happened to him. God he bless got, you. Yeah. Colt McCoy. Terrible timing and um, amazing best. Oh, <laughs> oh Finnegan! <laughs> one sad. of the greatest <laughs> name. One of the greatest names for a quarterback ever. Oh Col- my! Colt McCoy. God. That yeah. guy was born to be a quarterback isn't his, in Texas. Isn't his younger brother there now? K- Case McCoy. Am I crazy? Am I making something up? That sounds familiar. I know their quarterback. The big one. Their starting quarterback now is um, Quinn Ewers. The backup, though, Arch Manning, is like one That's of the. That's what man- it is. Yeah. I'm sorry. It was one, one of the, the Manning kids. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So anyway, my freshman year, we went to the the finals. Um, I was like, football's the fucking best thing in the world. We're yeah. awesome at it. And uh, th- if you've ever been, have you ever been to like a football game in the south no i've it's never yeah i haven't most, either but i it's like a I mean, bucket you list gotta, I want you to. gotta yeah. go you yeah. have to make this a priority because yeah. it was fucking lit it was so much fun yeah i went at all the tailgating i was on one of the sports teams too so it was like we would go and take the recruits and sit at the, like the half yard like or the middle um, i don't even know the rules line. <laughs> the middle the middle yeah <laughs> And um, then every other year after that, we were garbage. Like, yeah. Hard, like, so, yeah. like, embarrassing. They went bad. through a slump. Yeah. A slump is something. That's yeah. what we would call Damn. it. We were, like, not good. Yeah. <laughs> we weren't even, been, like, the Big 12. We were not winning. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Well, my, my college didn't even have a football team. There you go. We, we were a commuter college, oh. State University. That's mm-hmm. like another big thing. So you had to, like, fight on the, the, we, the we trains. Just ha- we had an indoor. Uh, soccer team that wasn't very good <laughs> they were not the the you san francisco like gators oh yeah, oh. yeah san so francisco famously has no gators yeah, no, <laughs> yeah that's like, but it was like golden gator so it was like a play oh, on words cute. which is like oh, kind of cute. oh that makes sense yeah. Okay. Yeah, so i was the stony brook sea wolves which is not a thing th- what's the <laughs> a sea wolf <laughs> yeah it, and our mascot was You're just a, a wolf, wolf. <laughs> But he's yeah, we little, yeah, he's a little lake wolf. Yeah, <laughs> it was in Long <laughs> Island, and I remember our lacrosse team was good, and those games became awesome. So I can only imagine like football in the South. Like, well, oh. I have a friend who lives in Texas now. I because I grew up in New York, so the college there were no good college teams. Yeah, but I had a friend in high school who was from Texas, and we would watch football with him, and he was a big Longhorns fan. Yes, and that was like when I was. Yeah. Like 15, and that was the year that the Vince Young year when they yes. won the championship. Yes, yes, so. they like put up a statue. Oh, Holy Vince shit. Young. Oh, yeah, Dang. they l- when they, yeah, they lose their mind. Oh, yeah, and it's one of the only sports programs that makes money that like actually turns a profit, and it's because people the... are that you don't want to pay. That's first and foremost, <laughs> that's a huge part of the equation. Yeah. Don't pay anyone, yeah. uh, but secondarily, merchandise the shit out of it, and nice. they are extremely litigious. Mm. If you put the Longhorn anywhere, you're Probably gonna get sued. We yeah. should we should put it on our fucking logo for our podcast. Yeah, just you'll get a call. Yeah. You'll get a call. No, not if we have a little like we can make it inspired by. What if we both just do? What it. if we both just make that? We all do this, and this is now the thumbnail for the <laughs> episode. <laughs> yes, come on, this Hook is this horns. Horns. Or Yeah, <laughs> this is oh, Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Spider Man, hook 'em horns. There yeah, what you are you talking? <laughs> um, nice. I actually have a Longhorn tattoo. You Uh-oh. do. Mm-hmm. Nice. That was did, a choice. Did you make? <laughs> <laughs> did oh. you get it when you were there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the tradition was that if you won a national championship, you were allowed to get a Longhorn tattoo for the swim team. So. Okay. Did this? Oh, the swim team when you were there won the national championship. Yeah. I know. I won one. So. Whoa. It was like, yeah, yeah. Hell Whoa. yeah. You can, you can only get a t- that tattoo. That was like the rule on the team. I'm gonna get so one. So I on was my like, neck. obviously, I'm gonna get this. Yeah. So <laughs> my parents were like, okay. <laughs> Charles Manson style, just <laughs> right, <laughs> on your, right on your forehead. <laughs> Everyone's like, "Whoa, she's so employable." <laughs> <laughs> if your if your boss is a Longhorns fan, yeah, probably hyper employable yeah. or not at all. <laughs> you get your dream job, and it's an Oklahoma Sooner fan as yeah. a boss, the final boss, yes. if I may. <laughs> nice. um, so, in swimming, like individuals would win the national championship. Yeah, so it's like you go to NCAA's, and it's like all the individual races but you're earning points for each right. race so it's like based on how the whole team performs over the whole thing Damn. that's how they yeah. win the national championship and there's oh. relays and stuff too gotcha and so. then what is the professional swimming world like after Ooh. you get out of college 
Yeah, yeah. Well, everything is different now, so I can't really speak to it now because you they pay them now. Can you believe that's wild? Well, even in wild. college now, there's like exactly. name, image, likeness, and everything. Exactly. So in co- there's guys now staying in college instead of going to the NFL because they're like. I'm making s- millions of dollars. Nice, dude. The Van Wilder college. approach. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and also they have the marketing arm of like University of Wisconsin or whatever behind it. There's some film students there looking to do a little internships. For sure, they're yeah. going to make oh. some sick content for you. Yeah. You know? So, uh, yeah, no, the Damn. whole thing is different now. Back when I, back when my day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no money. Um, when you finish at college like some girls would leave early but for the most part people would do all four years get your degree and stuff like that and then if you were in a certain ranking worldwide you would get money from the united states like usa swimming okay um so american taxpayers thank Mm, you yeah and um, (laughs) and then based on that you'd be it wasn't very much but then you'd be able to do like clinics and stuff like that and continue training and competing around for the United States. So, like, I would do, like, the World Cup circuits and go and travel to, like, a bunch of random countries and compete. And, like, Where did you drink tra- and stuff? Where, when you would, yeah, I was <laughs> no, saying, when fun. you would, was, did you ever have fun with the traveling? I personally did. It's probably why I wasn't as good as I should have been. Yeah. Did you ever get detained somewhere for having a vape pen on you? Yeah. No. Any Britney Griner situations? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Oh, yeah. I see what it is. No, no, no. I, um, uh, no, respectfully, no. I did get yelled at um, in Dubai. Uh oh. Because I was. Uh, didn't have your face covered? I didn't. No, Dubai's actually pretty cool. Oh. Minus, I was at a club and I was dancing with a guy, God for fucking bid. And we were like, you know, we were interested in one another. And that is not allowed. That yeah. is not allowed. So, like, guards with like AK 47s come running up, pull us apart. I'm like, oh. Holy Damn. shit. Like, it's, it is fine. They are against. <laughs> he is not worth it. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No gentrification. That was, yes, <laughs> exactly. Was he Indian? Uh, no. He oh, was French. Was Whoa. Was French, Zoot dude. Delores, yeah. dude. Exactly. I was wondering if they were all coming to be like, stay away from the white girl. <laughs> <laughs> be careful. They are very toxic. <laughs> Damn, that's <laughs> None wild. of these people were Indian. We're Middle oh, East. No. Even the people, <laughs> even, the, <laughs> even, the, even the cops who came over weren't. <laughs> yeah, no, not you one You were person. in Dubai and you were just hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> not one person. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, that is, is it just men and women just can't in public do anything physical there? I mean, I have no idea. I'm sure there's like levels to it. Yeah. yeah. You know, we were in a, a pretty popular club. I, we were also like pretty obviously American. So perhaps yeah. they were, uh, who Maybe knows? Like they were like, yeah. pissed off the wrong guy. I do yeah. not know. It's hard to tell. That's like such a scary thing with leaving oh. the greatest country in the world. America, yeah. Exactly. Mm. Where you could literally so I said, do... I go USA, USA. Yeah. And they were like, you yeah. gotta go. <laughs> they fucking draped the American out. flag over you, yeah. I'll you out. maybe that's why they were yelling at me i was draping a flag yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's scary because like in america we can do whatever we want we're white people yes you know? exactly it's like so. little repercussion dude little you know little to none. It's, it's very fucking cool yeah it's I love very it. little you go anywhere else dude you watch locked up and alone and you fucking see these people like going to other countries yeah Vile, dude. Can you imagine some minority putting me in jail? That'd be so scary, dude. Insane. Absolutely. Although apparently none of them were minorities. <laughs> no, no, they were all just they, from the UAE. Like I don't know. <laughs> these guys were. Um, I and would very go wealthy. to. I would go to English speaking foreign places, but I feel like outside of Europe, I get very scared. Yeah. Very <laughs> I will. I will say. I also on this same another stint tried to go home with a guy nice. who had. Uh, what's wrong with me? I'm actually not really like this. I've been <laughs> mostly in monogamous relationships, but. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, national champion swimmer Laura was a different Laura. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I'm really yeah. <laughs> changed. But anyway, uh, I was trying to go home with this guy again in like the fucking Middle East. And my friends were like, you can't, you'll die. Like you, if you Damn. disappear, we won't. What do we do? Yeah. What do we fucking do? Get, yeah. get in the hotel. <laughs> get the, <laughs> yeah. Huh? Yeah, literally. Natalie Holloway. Literally, they were like, I can't stress this enough. You are not getting in that car. <laughs> That's scary because, like, as a woman, to have to worry about that because, like, I oh. feel like guys would just be like, oh, whatever. That's the I'll, approach I'll I'll I was taking. <laughs> I'll figure it out, dude. Don't worry about it. I was like, he's hot. Also, he's rich. If, and they were like, that don't yeah. see him again. Yeah. like, he did. He died doing what he loves. <laughs> he's got oil money, probably. <laughs> oh, for sure. I was yeah. like, he probably got like a cheetah yeah. at his place or something cool. Why are you going to swim oh, yeah. in places with the least water in the world, I though? I know. <laughs> the, money. Because yeah. of money. They're the Middle East, they have no bodies of water. <laughs> India, they have no drinking water. <laughs> and you're just I went to Tokyo. That one's near water. Okay, there you go. It's surrounded by water. 
water. That yeah. Is, yeah. And got and Godzilla. <laughs> yes, yes, that was a fun one. Um and that must have been a know. culture shock. The way Tokyo. Oh yeah, yeah. for sure. Mm. Oh my god. He must have just towered story. over everyone in Tokyo. Well, too. So, so you didn't want to go home with any of the guys there. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was funny about it. But the, we were very, very large, obviously, right? Like, we're there to, for fucking sports. Yeah. The whole group. And all the guys are, like, 6'5 plus. Like, yeah. it's a tall Damn. group of people. And it was over Halloween that we were there. So we were walking around, and there's all these groups of Japanese people. I didn't realize it, that's a worldwide holiday, holiday now. Oh, yeah. People love Halloween. It's a so fun one. It's so fun. And Japanese people adore it. They were yeah. fully dressed up, like, massive groups of little Japanese ladies in their little outfits and then they would see us and be like oh shit we need a picture with these <laughs> massive the americans people. these are the yeah. biggest americans we've ever seen people people we've ever seen in our lives yeah yeah they so think we have they all were these pictures of them like and they're like yeah. or do they think yeah. you were just other japanese people dressed as american giants <laughs> yeah yeah we're like happy halloween <laughs> yeah. this was really hard to pull off yeah you would not believe <laughs> Damn, that's so cool. It was fun. Yeah. How did you when you would do those competitions? Was was, was USA swimming like good compared to the other yeah. country? Yeah, the US is like one of the best. I would I would say they're we're the best. Um, Australia is quite good as well. Russia is very mm. good. Yeah, but they're all like Damn. you know, dudes <laughs> doing yeah. women swimming competitions. Oh yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All Australians are dudes. Every yeah. single no, one. the Russians. Oh, the Russians. Well, I well, mean, before before like the conversation now with like trans people and sport, that was just a thing. Like uh, there was like a Russian shot putter that w- that was just yeah. a th- Russian. They were on drugs. Yeah, they were on drugs. They would and do everything. It was weird because they were on drugs pretty openly. Yeah, and it wasn't the athlete's fault because you were like, oh, you don't have a choice. Yeah, you can't even be mad it's, at them. It's like, like the what culture. the fuck are you gonna do? Yeah. Well, if Putin, yeah. if the the Russian Federation says you're gonna do drugs, you're gonna do drugs. Yeah. You don't get to choose. That's, that's right. It is their culture, though, so we shouldn't yeah. really we shouldn't really <laughs> yes, be exactly. criticized. We shouldn't it. shame them. Yeah. There, uh, one of the girls who I was racing against, like my primary competition, was in the Icarus documentary. Oh shit! Oh yeah. wow! I watched that documentary. Yeah. Well, like you look yeah. at those Russian swimmers pumping themselves full of you know those drugs, and then you look at American swimmers like Michael Phelps pumping himself full of THC. Yes. Remember when he took that tasty fucking bong? Remember rip? when everyone freaked out about that? And, Isn't and, it funny yeah. in retrospect? You're like. <laughs> we were pe- like everyone was m- big mad everyone was like he big was like mad. losing sponsorships <laughs> yeah. and everything and i think he yeah. would gain so many sponsorships now and then people I were mean, making yeah. jokes it's like oh because he's eating all that food no wonder he's eating all that food he's smoking all, all that food. and it's like <laughs> well at the time people were like well he needs to protect his lungs because he has to be a swimmer it's like what about he's such a great athlete he can smoke weed and still win yeah, olympic won, gold medals in swimming he won eight golds i think he's yeah. gonna be okay he still <laughs> and he went. He was winning more medal after that. T- he won even more after the oh, he was yeah. came out. He was fine. It was so funny. Yeah. It was just so how they created nothing, something who, out of nothing. Who yeah. was president then? I think it was H W. Uh, no, it would have been George W. Uh, I mean, yeah, or Barack. George w. It may have been in Obama. 08? It may have. Oh wait, no, it was. It was. It was Bush to Obama. Bush, yeah, it was yeah. during towards the end of Bush, probably. Because okay. remember when like Obama, yeah, Bush, we yeah. didn't like we didn't like weed during Bush. Yeah, Obama was like, yeah, I inhaled. Uh, that's the point. Yeah, and, that, <laughs> and people were like, oh, Obama's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, we have yeah. really come a long way. Good we for have. us. Well, we learned how to uh, monetize marijuana. Oh, yeah, and then the it, 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 we were like, whoa, we'll, we'll sell that. <laughs> Absolutely, oh, really? America just, loves well, like, money. Yeah, if you look at like the number of uh, um, places that can grow marijuana, yeah, like cigarette companies like marlboro <laughs> and american spirit like they own a lot of oh area yeah to, do you remember do, do you remember out the gate when like random pothead bros in denver were like i'm gonna be an entrepreneur oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are getting smoked right now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking decimated yeah. marlboro comes in and is like get the hell it's out of so, here it, yeah it's like that's w- they were the ones that were back in all of yeah. like the funding for all of that yeah well, which is also fu- which is like all right, cool. It's gonna happen regardless. Yeah, I know. think there needed. There was the Marlboro Man. Why didn't they ever do like a marijuana man? Yeah, that was Cheech an and Chong, marijuana Marlboro. Yeah, yeah. There was like Cheech and Chong. Like the weed yeah. culture presents itself, man. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. You can't just you can't be like shape a, it. Yo, the you marijuana can't be in some yeah. fucking office man with a tie trying to construct how it is, man. You just have yeah. to let it happen. The marijuana man is just Willie Nelson, actually. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was your because like Another the whole Austin legend? Yes. Oh shit. <laughs> 
What was your um, diet like? Because the thing with, uh, like, Michael Phelps, they always say, like, 6,000 calories oh, a day or so whatever. Yeah. Here's the shitty part about being a woman. You still don't get to eat whatever you want. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was wondering. Real ripoff. Yeah. Real, not yeah. worth it. Don't swim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't be a woman, actually. Don't be I a wouldn't woman. recommend. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. must suck, dude. You, know, you look at woman. some of these people, <laughs> they have to pay, like, $15,000 for trans surgery. It's like, but you're going to... Yeah. Get like you're, you're gonna be a woman, so you, dude. You gotta piece it down. Yeah, it's a real pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah dude. Let me tell you. Yeah, so like, especially, I mean, during periods of the training, like when you were in Christmas training or like the really hard periods, you could eat pretty much what you wanted yeah. for the most part. But then other periods, like you definitely couldn't. You'd yeah. have to eat stupid fucking salads, a uh. stupid fucking salad. And I was like, I don't want stupid fucking salad. Yeah. I want nachos. Yeah. So you'd have to eat like very clean and all this stuff. And also ironically, like as you got older and more efficient at swimming, you wouldn't burn as many calories. Cause you're like, you know, if you walk all the time, your body kind of adjusts to yeah. it. Yeah. It's not as hard as when you first start walking. Yeah. So, that's yeah. interesting because I like uh, just in the gym. I f- every few months I like change my workout slightly just to confuse your body a little bit to yeah. continue yeah. getting results. Yeah. But yeah, I hadn't thought about that. That with Tricky swimming yeah. or with a sport where that is kind of the workout, you're not changing the motion. You're just doing right. the same motion. Yeah. It's the wow. same motion, and you get better at it. So like you get more, literally more efficient. You glide further and all. So that it stuff. kind of has less of an effect as a workout. Yeah. So we'd have yeah. to run. Yeah, They'd exactly. Make us run what? Also, yeah, exactly. Damn, dude. I was like, "This is, I'm swimming because I hate running." Yeah. <laughs> Why? Why do I have to uh, do both? Are they like, oh, muscle confusion and all? <laughs> yeah. Of this My shit. favorite part was that. So I swam. If you know Austin, like if you, um, the city's, mm. um, like really close to campus. Like all of it's like very, very yeah. close, like a mile. So there was campus, and then you'd go down, and then there's like the the water down here, and in the middle is Sixth Street. Yeah. And Saturday mornings, they would make the team run from campus to the water and back, like as part of our training. So we'd be crossing 6th Street at like 7 a.m. It is the filthiest, dirty. Do you know 6th Street? It's like where mm. like all the partying is. Oh, okay. It's like yeah. the, it's this f- very famous row of bars. Like yeah. people are just like throwing up every. It's like Bourbon Street kind oh, yeah. of style. And we're running past it just swafting hot Texas uh. bar scene. We're just like. I love my sport. This was worth yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Damn, dude. Man. Was there ever any thought of were you able to maybe try like Olympics? Was that ever a goal? Yeah, or? I was. Well, I'm probably I need to do like a one woman show on this or something. Nice. Um, I was. Nah, you're just doing the Buff Boys podcast. The Buff Boys podcast. <laughs> Talk about it all podcast. here. <laughs> but um, I was a favorite to make the team in okay. 2016. Uh, and in 2012, I got fourth place at the Olympic trials. Yeah. Um, so I like was really up top to make it in my event. Um, and then 2016, I was like far and away, like number one who was supposed to go. And then I ate shit at the trials. I got so, so nervous and I didn't do well at all. Uh, I know it was so tragic. I'm definitely funnier now because of it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, That's what really matters. Yeah. The the bits. Cause so much better. Who's the woman that went instead of you? Probably uh, not funny at all. Not funny. <laughs> very, very talented girl. <laughs> Damn. Fuck her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone could be an Olympic athlete, but how many people can be a podcaster? That's uh, true. Also a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really. Well, whatever. Well, when the Olympic... Finn's going nuts. Yeah. yeah, he just gets excited. Well, He's when, in the a good Olymp- mood. when the Olympic podcast trials come up, I think you'll be uh, more prepared uh, with true. the Risque Business podcast. That's true. I'm going to yeah. I'm I'm coming for it. I'm going to nail it this time. Yes, do absolutely. St- do you still watch? Like Olympic swimming? No, not really. Do you follow the swimming world at all? Still? No. no. I mean, I still get. I do things with it. Like I went to an event for for swimming a few months ago in Austin, which was fun. Um, I do some stuff with USA Swimming on occasion. Um, yeah. Matt has performed for them. Oh. He did. They have like a big Golden Goggles event, and he um, Golden Goggles. Yes, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> and they they bring in comedians sometimes. Um, they brought in like Jim Gaffigan one year. Oh wow! Stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. It's like just like their big annual party. Um, so Matt got to do a set for them. So uh, I'm still like, t- like I love. I'm happy with my swimming period, but I'm not really like a fan of the sport. Like I don't. Nice. Yeah. It's kind of boring. You were. They need to, like, to spice it up a little. You you, you completed that chapter and it I served did. its purpose. Was it yeah, just was growing up? You were just good at it, so you kept yeah. doing it. Oh yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Did you play any other sport? You play any yeah. other sports? I bet, dude. Mm-hmm. No. No. Um, I could, like I would have, but I again I just started specializing yeah. quite early, so it was like, <coughs> why? 
Yeah, you know? that makes sense. Well, if you're good at it too, because like that's like the rush, if, for that childhood oh, for sure. rush of like being good at something. Oh, especially it's yeah. so formative, you know. Just yeah. being like, oh, I'm gonna win. It it, it sets you up for like a good mentality down mm-hmm. the line too, because like man, when I remember I was like. My dad would sign me up for like Little League Baseball and I was not good. Uh-huh. But every once in a while I hit the ball. I'm like, what a rush. <laughs> <laughs> but it was. Damn, I get this. I was like, oh, fuck yeah. And then like, yeah. you know, a kid would immediately catch it. You're out. I'm like, well, fuck. Doesn't matter. This was Back, fun. Yeah. <laughs> but Back. that kid who caught it had a rush. <laughs> I got Joe out. Hell yeah. yeah. Everybody won in that situation. Yeah. That Everyone was beautiful. Everyone gets a rush. <laughs> yeah. Rush for you. Rush for you. Yeah. 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 Um, so at what point uh, is it? Did you uh, were you a comedy fan growing up? I loved it. Okay. I loved stand up comedy back when you remember LimeWire. Oh hell yeah! yeah. Oh, I would go on LimeWire and I would search the Comedy Central half hours. Yeah. Download seventy five viruses to my parents' computer. Yeah. And I was like, enjoy those. And here is like, I don't know, like Tosh or like yeah. anybody I could get my hand. I was One a huge Mitch fan Hedberg. of Lewis Black. Yeah. Yes, Mitch yeah. Hedberg. There, there were a Those lot of Comedy good ones. Central half hours. Uh, Bill Burr had a good that one. They were so. Well, it was big just whatever J, big was. J, big J Oakerson. I, I but I was his. restricted to whatever was being available via like the torrenting right. on fucking LimeWire. They used to play them like on Comedy Central, yeah. like a marathon. My parents didn't have uh, cable TV. They did not believe in oh, television for well, us. Oh, I know, but I. I yeah. But I mean, we had like the internet, so like, who cares? You know? Yeah. But if you're training, like, you know, Olympic levels, I didn't really have time. Yeah. Yeah. That's it didn't true. really matter, and I was able to to go on LimeWire and get yeah whatever was being put up there. So then, so then I like listened to those while I was yeah. doing whatever driving and stuff like that. I loved it. So then, loved as it, it. is there a point while you're swimming that you're ever thinking about doing comedy, or is it? You know what? Yeah. I don't know about you guys. I didn't realize pe- people did it. Like. In my mind, I was like, that is a not a human being, even. Like, mm. that's not a person I could ever be. Yeah, I never thought about it, it either. Because I grew up in sports also. I was yeah. wrestling. Yeah. So I, my, my mindset was always on athletics and whatever I could do there. And so I, nev- I never performed in any way. So yeah. I never even thought of it as a Option. thing. Yeah. It, ne- it seems so foreign. I mean, if... I would have loved to, and I would make up my little jokes to myself and stuff like that. Yeah. But like the thought, I would oh, really? the, the between the connecting the dots, I was like, mm, couldn't tell you. Oh shit! Yeah. yeah. Now I've been doing stand up since high school. So really? Like, yeah. yeah. That's like I've been probably like. Where where was your high school? Where was I, your high I was in? I went to Half Moon Bay High in <laughs> okay. Half Moon Bay, California. Got it. Uh, massive ho- comedy hub. Yeah, yeah massive <laughs> comedy hub. But it was also just like I was just like a weirdo little theater kid. So Love. that's what I was doing. That so I was doing musical theater and stuff instead of cross country or basketball or anything. Yeah. Oh, was, and here you are yeah. podcasting in a way. Look, yeah. we're you're, all yeah, you're we're not all, running around. We're all doing the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> we're all just and talking we all to united. A yeah. <laughs> we all came together. All the paths diverge and come back <laughs> yeah. together. I guess stand up itself it feels so weird because like even as somebody not in performing like I would I knew of performances and the theater kids and all and it's like but what they're doing isn't quite stand up either. No. So I almost didn't even know how someone becomes or does stand I up. Didn't, I didn't have any representation I knew that like whoever the big people would come to the major major theaters in the region mm. and that was it yeah and that was the only and i lived in rhode island so there wasn't like if you went up to providence i'm sure there was like you lived in going. rhode island mm-hmm. when was that growing up or? growing up yeah oh so this and then is growing up and then i was recruited and i went down to texas for oh swimming. okay yeah. gotcha. but i wasn't from texas um, okay and then once I was in Austin, I'm sure there was prob- I know there was stand up going on, but like there's just no time. Yeah. Gotcha. And I started doing improv in college because I my friend did it and I was like, oh, this is like kind of what I want to fucking yeah, do. Yeah. like. This is yeah. kind of like my little the, the, the half hours. This is like yeah. the thing. And then eventually from there, it started being like, oh, shit, stand up's like right there. Yeah. Stand up <laughs> is like, oh, this is like uh, let me just get all the best parts of improv which yeah. is me being funny <laughs> and cut out everything that sucks which is every other fucking <laughs> loser doing improv with me <laughs> slowing down my fucking incredible craft being like what if yeah, I I'm a fucking robot shut the fuck up Brett <laughs> what if I didn't have to put the team on my back yeah. this whole time <laughs> what, if I, what if I got all the applause and all the laughter That'd be just massive. for me <laughs> what if I came up with what I wanted to talk about instead of asking the audience yeah. for a suggestion <laughs> exactly. I need a uh, restaurant and a profession <laughs> Pineapple again? God yeah. damn it! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I did improv in uh, college too, and there yeah. was a lot of. Uh, it, it was it was open to everyone, but it was always like three kids were like w- a little too into it. Oh, absolutely! And I would ruin it for everyone else. And yeah. the teachers were like, 
like always oddly strict very strict extremely depressed mm -hmm. where you're like it's fine where it's like it's like <laughs> maybe this isn't a good fit for your life the joy <laughs> of performance it's like they just it's so weird when they try to no. make it all pragmatic and no and they'd be like yeah. trying to turn a profit on the whole thing yeah. and i'm like you're gonna piss people off and this <laughs> yeah. is just feels like the least efficient way to do this yeah go sell software yes. well and then they think like Improv, where they would think, like, whose line is it anyway? Yeah. Or, like, ASCAT, like, Upright Citizens Brigade yeah. type stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, my the only improv I ever really knew was whose line is it anyway, and I love that Fabulous show. show. Yeah. So I thought, so like... When do we so start doing that? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, but like, that, before... that goes against all sports because the points are made up and none of the points matter. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, every once in a while I want an escape from yeah. my, from yes, my high world. High pressure. One, from mm -hmm. my world where points are the only thing that matter. <laughs> <laughs> Professional wrestling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's um, very similar to whose line yeah, is it anyway? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, once I so like when I first would hear because I like had started listening to like stand ups and like interviews. I would listen to Opie and Anthony and all. They would always shit on improv, but the only improv I knew was whose lines is it anyway. So I was like, These I, guys are know, idiots, I, th yeah. I think, I think <laughs> improv is pretty good. And then uh, I saw more improv local yeah. shows and uh, I was like, oh, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I will say, like doing it definitely helped get me more comfortable with stand up when but the time yeah. came. Yeah. Because well, it's like being in front of an audience. Being yeah. on stage is terrifying the first yeah. few times. If I or, didn't, still. <laughs> if I didn't make the trend from amateur wrestling to pro wrestling and do that for a bit, that got mm -hmm. me. Com that was the first performance I ever did. There, did you? Because really? well, when I did pro wrestling, I haven't done it a while, but uh -huh. but that was my first time performing in front of an audience because it was it was still the same. A lot of the athleticism and stuff that I'd been doing my whole life, but now it was a performance. More like a ballet situation, kind of. Kind of. I like. I always called it like painful live theater. <laughs> like, um, That's most live theater though, yeah but then you're also like getting on the microphone and being a character and like you do better fun. if you get to get like legitimate crowd reactions because right. i mean also a lot of people would just come up with ideas for characters but the crowd wouldn't care mm -hmm. so it's like it's fun to an extent but it's uh, you know you could be doing something that's fun but the, you're not making any money and then no yeah. one's gonna book you yep. so but so. yeah, it um yeah I didn't um, and I did sketch comedy club when I was in college. What sketch comedy club? It was just they had a club on campus, the sketch comedy club. And one of my friends knew me and thought I was funny and asked me to audition for it. And it's like you do did, sketches. You yeah, write sketches? we would. They would write and perform. And then I would like add in possible lines, like because okay. they they were more like in the theater world. Oh, you were doing punch up. I uh, kind of yeah. In hindsight, I knew, I didn't know anything about comedy at yeah, the time. Yeah, they just gave you a script. They, they gave you a yeah. script. Matt would come in with a cigarette and a red <laughs> pen, start writing <laughs> shit, tell him how to make it a little bit better. Add a pie in the face. I what read, if you had wrestling at yeah, the same yeah, time yeah. as this? <laughs> That'd be pretty good. Yeah, my way of punching things up <laughs> yeah. is just like so. Then I can do a fake punch that'll look pretty <laughs> yeah. good. And, uh, I could do I could do sweet chin music. Can we get that in there in any way? <laughs> yeah, I improv is good. Just to it, it helps your comedy in that it lets you go feel comfortable going up on stage without having to plan. Yeah, which is really good. And how to think on your feet and how to engage. I think that people who do improv are generally a little bit better at crowd work because yeah. you're less scared of the crowd yeah. engaging with you. Yeah. You know, you're, you're like, you oh, fuck, like, whatever. This is easier than an annoying person mm. in my class who I have to yes and. Right. You, I can shit on this person. This yeah. is awesome. <laughs> you can train your brain to find a way to put it in directions to make it work yeah. and make yeah. it funny. Did you um, feel like um, anything from the swimming background and just your athletic background has helped you in comedy? Yes and no. I think um, being a swimmer, you're inherently like super bored a lot of the times. It's like oh, fucking yeah. terrible. You what spend you four hours a day swimming, staring at a black line at the bottom of the pool. Damn. Uh, yeah. What well, are we doing? What like, a, yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> were, you ever, were you ever in a situation where a booker was like, all right. The headliner is whoever can hold their breath the longest. <laughs> Not yet, but I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. You're <laughs> Call like, me. This is my chance. This is my chance. It's a good, a yeah. good opportunity to put that offer back out there right. for everybody. <laughs> um, so I think that like the the discipline from all that has been really helpful because yeah. like you know if you're like at a mic or at a you know commuting or something like that like the boring parts I'm like. Oh, whatever. Like yeah. I don't have to mm -hmm. stare stare at a black line at the bottom yeah. of the pool for four hours. Damn, this yeah. is massive. Um, so that's been helpful. But I also do think that it like kind of reduced some of my life experiences in a weird way. Like I was very I was in a very controlled environment for my whole upbringing. 
my whole upbringing, I was like just basically hyper focused on this one outcome. Yeah. And I do think I missed out on some stuff. So like, oh, okay. That or a sense. lot of the stuff is not necessarily relatable to audiences. So I've still been trying to figure out like what of the stuff I did growing up, like people would want to hear about. Gotcha. You know? Okay, I guess that's Which that I makes think sense. I'll get into over time, which is why I'm like potentially interested in doing like a more specialized show. Yeah. Joe's dying. Joe's dying. All right, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> He's back. No, yeah. she, I got water because I was coughing and then ironically drinking the water went down the wrong yeah. pipe. Wow. <laughs> what an O. Happened. Henry story. Yeah, it really yes. is. Just to see it unfold on a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> we got to clip I mean, that. ignoring it, yeah. just being like, talk over him. Yeah. <laughs> now, we'll get it in post. He's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get that in post. Don't even worry about yeah. that. <laughs> I do uh, I do think that coming from an athletic background helped me be less competitive in comedy. Like, I think because people in comedy are yeah. always like, oh, why'd that person get that instead of me? Or like in the roast battle world, people like really want to win. And I feel like those are people who never did actual competitions in their life yeah. or weren't able to be really that. competitive with the thing. Because to me, it's like I got pinned in front of everybody and like w it was embarrassing. Yeah. Like for amateur wrestling, like when you lose, it's not just someone like – hit the ball further than me or whatever. Somebody manhandled me in front of a crowd and, and held me I down. I can't even like, imagine. And then it's it's yeah. intimately embarrassing. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, and then it's not like it even just happened. It was like, no, a writing staff decided it needed to happen too. It wasn't like, oh, I fucking slipped and fell. They're like, yo, this Matt doesn't have what it takes. Yeah. You gotta fucking <laughs> Fuck him get up. this guy Fuck out of here. Yeah. I also found that like, I think I've been a lot more patient with the process than I would have been without swimming because I like, realized like, to be really good at something, you need to put in forever. Yeah. Like, it takes a long time yeah. to, like, get to a very elite level at anything. Yeah. You know? So, it's like, it's fine. Be gentle with yourself because you're being bad because you're supposed to be. You have to be bad. Yeah. Mm. Well, I think a lot of people in comedy who weren't in, like, competitive in sports or anything, comedy is, like, one of the first things in their life that they're able to be better than yeah. other people at in a way where there is kind of a competition in some ways. Yeah. So, it is, like easier to like fall into being really competitive about it yeah but i think being competitive about comedy is just going to make you more miserable and i also what's funny about it is like in swimming the competition made so much sense because there were two slots for the olympics every yeah. four years damn that sucks dude. So, it's insane you could go a world record and not make the olympic team did you were you like hoping to get into the Olympics because of all like the crazy sex that happens at the athlete mm -hmm. Olympic the village? Olympics? I was in a relationship, so no. Damn, <laughs> I almost no. got into the Olympics for uh, competitive eating. Oh yeah, no, yeah. No, okay. That, that wasn't a thing at the time. You were just, just do competitive he, eating, but for the sex. You just yeah, do a well. big <laughs> bong rip before and get the munchies, yeah. and then nobody can out eat yeah. Joe. <laughs> yeah, fucking photos released of me taking a massive bong rip and. It, <laughs> Tears You're the standing with the Russians who yeah. are also doping. You're yeah. Like, you get suspended <laughs> for performance enhancing drugs at the Nathan's hot dog eating contest. They ban you if you'd smoke weed before the contest. Yeah, they have a fucking piss test for all of that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was like so close after 9 11, I didn't have time to apply for the Olympics. <laughs> right. Too busy thinking about my tour in Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah true. Busy, man. Getting yeah. They hate our freedom, man. Yeah. I remember when George Bush told me that, I was like, God damn. They must be true villains then to hate <laughs> yeah. to hate free just the idea freedom. of us in, just mm -hmm. the idea of us enjoying no. our freedom. They're like, I don't think so funny. That's what they're thinking about. Yeah. Definitely the focus area. Yeah. For it them. worked so well that the WWE had a wrestler who was a Muslim who complained about um, uh, discrimination and how he's been mistreated after September 11th, and he was the hated bad guy. <laughs> 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 Everyone was like, "Fuck you!" No. They would chant USA in his face. <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> I like, what if they, wrestling doesn't give a fuck like they have never once cared <laughs> they go with what people will they react wanted, to they, this is the world it you is the, the most it this is, is it of things in entertainment it is maybe the most reflection of society <laughs> as of anything <laughs> we want to see a table thrown over this guy's head yes. please make it happen and yeah. they're like done yeah easy no yep. <laughs> problem <laughs>
when I was army commercial, yeah. army commercial, <laughs> army commercial. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When I was wrestling on the indie circuit, I remember there was a guy who his wrestling name was the Inside Jobber. <laughs> so the term jobber in wrestling is like a uh, synonym for loser because it came oh, from perfect. the, the that's term a, that's for lose the inside term for like losing the match. You do the job, right? Um, so a jobber is somebody who always loses. Nice. So he was the Inside Jobber, and he would come out. And just do a whole soliloquy about 9-11 being an inside job. In America, you're, you're all sheep. All of you dumb Americans were believing the real story. And then someone would come out and they would cheer for them and they would beat it. He would lose every time. <laughs> but, and the crowd would go crazy. What, how, <laughs> it must be an interesting to go home to his wife and just be like, I lost again, honey. <laughs> <laughs> and no one believed me about 9-11. I really believed that. Well, <laughs> I felt bad for him because he was always like mid-card to lie. I don't know if he, I, I never heard of him really since then. But maybe if you like do that cat character you kind of work your bones you could eventually become like one of the main event bad guys and like yeah. work your way up but if you just never make your way up and that's just kind of the, what the peak of your career was it's like nope i did this character yep. i mean you can you can lose all the time but still be an entertaining enough part of the show that a larger wrestling company would maybe want to bring you in yeah yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. but um but yeah, he. I guess he was, they were like, even this one's a little too politically spicy for yeah, us. No. <laughs> I think his um, goal was he wouldn't be doing that in like the WWE sure, ever. Sure, sure, but sure. he's like, I'm doing this to get attention, and people will well, see the talent that I, as a performer, we're talking have. about him right now. Yeah. So if, good if for you. If he can make 9/11 look cool, yes. what can he do for the rest of? These fucking events in America. Do, do they go. come up with their own? Do they have writers or do they? they come Unlike up with their the own indie, shit? on the indie circuit, it's usually you doing your own shit. It'll be like someone, a booker, or someone who will like tell you the direction you. they want. And sometimes there'll be people, even on the indie circuit, who are way more like hands on with what they want, uh-huh. um, for better or for worse. <laughs> So this guy's just like really passionate about his work. Yeah, I think like, he has, makes yeah. the most sense. This just feels like it's me. <laughs> I feel like that was probably something he can. I don't. I never talked with him or the booker specifically of who came up with that. If he like traveled around and was just known as this is the thing I do, and bookers All would right. call him for it. I bet that did not go over well in so New York. <laughs> Matt's uh, Matt's name was the Marinade, and he would come out with sauces and stuff. <laughs> really, Marinator. Yeah. That's great. He oh, would, okay, I was like, I'll uh, fucking know you. Just told me the inside jobber. He would do a thing where he knocks the guy down and starts like throwing Thousand Island dressing yeah. on him. Yeah. The guy's no, like, no, 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 no. I would grab the microphone and say, "You just got marinated." Uh, <laughs> I think that would be gargling. Again, I think you should have done this. I don't know why this isn't real. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. What was your little shtick? <laughs> <laughs> okay, ma- okay, it? mom. <laughs> <laughs> what was your little act? What was your yeah. sket like? What is your sket? <laughs> What's his uh, make him up? <laughs> I just I was uh, mostly like villainous, cocky, bad guy. Okay, um, yeah. and uh, white guy. Yeah. Huh? Just white guy. White guy. Yeah. Yeah. White devil. <laughs> My yes. mi- white devil. My middle name is uh, Nicholas. So when I was a kid, Shawn Michaels was like one of the bigger wrestlers, and he just switched his middle name and his first name. Oh, okay. So I was just Nick Matthews. Okay. Yeah, brilliant. I remember thinking I needed to have I needed to have a fake name to protect my anonymity when I became course, famous one day. Course, yeah. But I didn't want to have like a corny wrestler name. No, no. So no. it was like a real name <laughs> that just was. <laughs> my senior year of high school, I was like practicing my Nick Matthews autograph in my high school notebooks. Hell yes, <laughs> that's this is sports for you. Sports will yes. have you doing like autographs, just like oh yeah, this is. This I'm gonna be, be signed. I'm gonna, this is gonna be worth something. You one want, day. but it's good. You want yeah. the confidence. Yeah. If you're gonna do stand up, especially, you need to be a little Delulu yeah. to do it. And yeah. was there, a th- as you're growing up doing swimming, because there's um, not just the way, like, if you're growing up playing baseball or basketball, like, I want to make the NBA one day. That'll be my life. Yeah. Was there, what did you think what your life was going so to be? So the one thing that's nice about swimming is you don't have a delusion that, like, you're going to be swimming forever. Because okay, yeah. you obviously aren't. You're, you know, once you hit 25 as a woman, you're like, oh, <laughs> retire. <over>. Yeah. <laughs> like, really old. Yeah. That's really old for swimming. So I knew that That's really I would old for go. Most women, yeah, yeah it's really ew, it's disgusting. Yeah, um, <laughs> so old for like swimming, oh, Hollywood. I acting. hate it. I mean, <laughs> if Leonardo DiCaprio, the most compassionate, understanding man yes. in the world, yeah. is also disgusted by women over the age of twenty-five, I think he has a yeah. point. Um, <laughs> I'm thirty-two. Okay. <laughs> so I knew that I would at least swim through 2012 because I'd be in college still, and then I knew that like I had three years after I graduated college that I was like I probably like depending on how my career is going i might try to like do that yeah. um versus just like going straight to try to get a job or whatever the you, fuck you you could have turned it into a television career like summer sanders she used to be an olympic level swimmer so one of my best friends actually did do so 
Yeah. yeah. So she's uh, Elizabeth Beisel. She does like some of the commentating and stuff like oh, that. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. For yeah. swimming? Or? For swimming primarily. So I think she's dabbled in a couple other things. But yeah. Um, yeah. So like if you're real, sh- but you have to be really, really, really good and like kind of go on to that whole thing. And I was really good, but like those girls were like really, really, really good. You know? Yeah. I, I would, I, I would, I, I want to, I want to believe that personality also has like. It does. Yeah, it does. And I did do some stuff like that, yeah. but that was just, I, again, you have to kind of like s- swimming. If yeah. you want to do that, you know, and I was like, it's fine. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. There, someone's winning. Could have been like an official, like Texas Longhorn sports reporter of some sort, yeah. sideline reporter for yeah, the yeah, Longhorns yeah. games. You, and I, I was, I love going to sporting events. I have a lot of fun, but I'm not like a fan in the sense of I don't really care about like the stats necessarily. Mm, yeah, you know, I'm like, okay. You could I don't be, even know all the football rules. I'm just there like, was that thing. Um, get them. <laughs> I think it was uh, <laughs> Carissa Thompson. She's one of the sideline reporters, and she like got in trouble like a month or so ago because she uh, said early in her career she would like a lot of times like it's their job to run and catch the coach before they head into halftime. Yeah. And just be like, what do you got planned for the Thoughts. second half? And all they want to do is just get back to the. They're just like sure. we just got to work on our defense or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. Going. So she said there were a couple times they just run away without talking to her, and they would go to her, and she would just say, "Oh, he said they got to work on." their defense just like make something, make something up, up that made sense and probably is what they would have said and she got a whole bunch of shit people were like um nice. she's admitted a journalist admitting to making things up all right and take it easy yeah. then <laughs> people kind of came people came yeah. out like yeah it's people, sports yeah. like we yeah don't, it's not like the war exactly yeah. <laughs> she was on the front yeah. line she's yeah. not like they're bombing over there no they're not <laughs> uh, president biden swears to work on defense coming yeah up. Also, it's not like the reporters are going, Biden, before you get back in the war room, what do we need to work on the second half and the war on terror? (laughs) (laughs) She's just just like, I don't know. He's saying we're going to have nukes involved. Go with that. But there's no way the president could have formed a coherent sentence. (laughs) This is yellow journalism. (laughs) But when people would like, defend her also who were saying like oh she didn't mean it like like my whole thing was i'm like even if she did mean it i still don't necessarily i don't care yeah Yeah. (laughs) go off girl yeah of all the things it's like yeah go ahead and have fun yeah and And also like entertain us make it make it fun make it more fun yeah Yeah. give your thoughts like what do you think they should do at make them make some put stu- the make wives into play. I don't yeah. know. Make if it you, fun. If you're gonna <laughs> make some, if you're gonna make some stuff up, like really make some stuff up. Yeah. Be like, oh, he said he's gonna go in the uh, locker room. He's gonna massage all the uh, players' <laughs> uh, prostates. So you it feel like that'll <laughs> help them in the second half. <laughs> it got really weird. We should go check on them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned, folks. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, start yeah. talking about Taylor Swift being in the box. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's been celebrating a lot. Yeah, I'm, and I mean the box as in like the luxury box in an NFL game, not the box that you're going well, to. Well, she after. actually did go to the box, which is why we're all going to the box. Whoa! Yes. Because what? Taylor Swift of once course. went to the sex club. Where was what? Travis Kelsey when that happened? <laughs> Performing. Yeah, <Yikes. laughs> yeah. There you go. Maybe. Hopefully, Travis Kelsey was doing a cool podcast. See you later. Yeah, probably. Bye. He's a podcaster. That's yeah. true. Mm-hmm. I guess in a way, Kelly and I are like Travis You're Kelsey, exactly and Taylor exactly Swift. The same. Yeah. yeah. So what is? I haven't been to. I used to do. I bounced to the strip club, but I haven't been to like a live sex show. I what, went what once is, a yeah. long time ago Ooh. to this place, and it's. Um, I mean, I don't think it's nearly as intense as what they do in like Europe. Uh-oh. Which like yeah, like a donkey show. Yeah, oh, that's God. Mexico. The, the <laughs> <laughs> maybe Europe too. I don't know. Eastern Europe, yeah, perhaps. Maybe. Yes. Um, no, those so are just what Eastern European women look like. Those aren't <laughs> actual donkeys, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> women over twenty-five. Right. Um, yes. <laughs> Eastern European women yes, over twenty-five. Yes. They call that a donkey show. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, so this one is more. Um, as far as I remember, they like have like everyone's nude quite a bit. Like there's like you know. I don't think they actually ever fuck, but they like pull like a sword out of her vagina Whoa. and stuff like that. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. Her last is, time is I was like, Whoa! <laughs> is this your card? <laughs> is this your card? I yeah, love that. Yeah. And then um, they, they like, pull pee like on the audience and stuff Whoa. like that. Yeah. Do, they, do you get like a raincoat, like a Gallagher yeah. show? <laughs> <laughs> a little, bra- little umbrella. A little tarp. Everyone yeah. like, in the audience throws oh, up a tarp. No. It's they like SeaWorld. <laughs> you're in the splash zone. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, one can hope, but um, it will see. I'll let you know. I don't know. Well, I'm going to have Kelly take a shower when she gets back. You should. Yeah, safe. You should. <laughs> Absolutely. Goodness gracious. Lysol yeah. her down. Yeah. No. Yikes. Well, I hope I hope she has fun. I hope you guys have fun with that sex show while I watch American Dad. Absolutely. in the apartment. Absolutely. Yeah. Eating, I think we will. Eating cheese pizza. 
Very nice. There we go. That, yeah. that does yeah. sound nice too. It's the buff boy diet. That's true. What's your go to since you're still like a fitness person? You have your like go to cheat meals? Oh, I love wings. Yeah. I nice. love wings. Now do you get like the um, do you get like the drumstick or do you get like the um, actual all of it. bone all it. Of it i do boneless i just want to devour this i mean i'll I, and I, not I, think all, about it all of the above <laughs> i don't discriminate as a yeah. com- all of them are great um yeah huge fan of that love nachos too yeah those are yeah my favorite white trash meals white trash <laughs> <laughs> available at any bar yes, yes. That's the best so I was like do i want to get yeah. fucking nachos so yeah, i think that so- had too much of a role in my decision to go to texas was mm. nachos I was like, they're good down here. They're really not messing around. Is that, <laughs> oh, yeah. So what was the recruitment process like when you were coming? So in Rhode Island, you're one of the top swimmers in yeah. the country? It, yeah. yeah. And um, so I was being recruited. I got lucky my year that they were looking for my kind of specialty. So mm-hmm. I got very highly recruited just the way it works sometimes. Um, so I got to take trips around the country. Basically, what happens is the schools will fly you out to uh, go and um, – spend the weekend with the girls you get to watch a practice you yeah. get to meet the coaches obviously you get to meet the rest of the team um back in the day we would go and like party with the team as well nice. i think they've gotten really strict about that because they're like underage mm. uh, or something well that was always i would always hear stories from people who played college football and got recruited that it was oh like yeah they would just bring them in and Strippers. then just like yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> it was an interesting period of time because there were so many rules and no one followed any of them yeah <laughs> i bet they probably just say that now to save face but like you know a wink wink nudge nudge oh probably like. yeah i don't know i mean i'm sure it also depends on your sport if you're a non-revenue generating sport they're probably like don't fuck around like like, yeah, you don't make any sense. money. Maybe toe the line. Football, it's like go crazy. <laughs> whatever yeah, you need, go. Crazy. If you're Here's a five star recruit who can continue making us money, you could do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I got to go and take trips to the the various um, schools I was looking at, and um, which was really fucking fun. And then um, I had the most fun out in Texas and decided to go yeah. there. I met Lance Armstrong on my trip. Whoa, yikes. yeah. I was like, was whoa. This, was this? That, that was like Lance before the fall, huh? Yeah. Was it it oh, was. Wow. Before, I was going to ask if it was before, before, the fall. After, before the Oprah interview. Which was, which was pretty exciting. It was yeah. pretty cool to be like, oh, I saw that guy. That must have been fucking wild. Yeah. Because yeah, like, that was like back when he was like a do no wrong type guy. Like it He was, was such a hard ass. I was like, relax. That's what where he, it's like a Saturday morning. Like we're at like some like fucking event. I don't know. Like it's fine. Cool it. it. It's he always seemed like that kind of guy. Hard like ass, a little, you know. Like, yeah, really kind of intense and kind of yeah. focused. I guess I get it. Like he did. <laughs> he was clearly tri- he was clearly competitive. Well, yeah. I feel like he was also probably he was like in constant fear of getting like. I'm sure. Too, I'm know, sure. And do, is, doesn't he have like one ball? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's, that's like gotta that's gotta fucking, really make you irritated. That's a gotta bit. fucking bum you out. I know. I'm yeah. sure it's. So I that's, mean, I get it. That's crazy, man. It was like, it, it, it's like, you know, it, Lance Armstrong and Jared from Subway were those guys that were, you know, in the <laughs> early 2000s. Like, man, these fucking cool guys. Like, if yeah, you they said, did like, it. I saw Look these at cool them. Guys. They did it. These Look at these fucking are, patrons of hell. Never gonna do wrong. Yeah, and know? they both later in life needed way smaller pants. Yeah. Yeah, because Lance is missing a ball. For the children, yeah. <laughs> and, Jared, and children, <laughs> and then it's like, good lord, it just gets worse. It's like, what? How? Gr- when it was like with Lance Armstrong, it's like, well, that sucks, but it's also. With, with I kind of get the Lance one. Well, with the Lance, Lance, I can't I was, really relate to the Jared from Subway one. The <laughs> Lance one, I was kind of like. <laughs> This is a hot take. A little proud of him. I was mm. like, oh, we're fucking trying. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. It's, okay, America. Let's yeah. get let's get in there. You know. It wasn't like <laughs> go the, challenge. Yeah, the steroids were like, oh, okay. But then, like, when you see like how far he was going to cover up the steroids. Yeah, that the was stuff, out. The like, stuff when he like fully attacked people for even accusing him of it. That's where it starts yeah, to yeah, feel yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. sociopathic. Yeah. And, but I listened to him do interviews since then, and he is like, I fucked up, I'm sorry. Yeah. But I was just trying and to win and protect the entire U.S. cycling. That uh, makes sense. I, I love that. And he the, does have the Live Strong thing, which does a lot of good. Yeah. So. yeah. Did. Now it does. not Now it's associated with death. Oh. They've taken it back. And victory. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's now called Unalive Strong. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, well, a big yeah. part of this pod is uh, every week we have a feat of strength. Yes, we bring up a feat of strength for the Buff Boys podcast okay. each week. Um, this week's is, um, Joe sent this to me. It was like, this definitely has to be the feat of strength this week. 
Um, even though, actually, if you see the full story, it's not quite what it sounds like. Well, but that's just what the uh, news articles tell you. Dude. Right. So in Florida media. this week, Hulk Hogan helped rescue a girl from an overturned car. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Wow. That must have been a weird moment for her. Going from year so old. scared <laughs> <laughs> to so excited. Yes. <laughs> Fucking Hulk Hogan. Am I dead? <laughs> Are you God? A Hulk teenage, Hogan could be God. Teenage girl was trapped in an overturned vehicle after a crash in Flor- Florida, and Hulk Hogan showed up, seventy years old, to save the day. Oh yeah! Dude. How did he do it? Did he just like open the door? Or did he like flip he, he, the car? So he tried yeah. to open the door, and it wasn't happening. He was like, oh, <laughs> he had to rip, rip off his off shirt, his shirt. <laughs> and then flip yeah. the car over. You that just was, have the security yeah. camera from like a Taco Bell in the corner. <laughs> it's just like, why is he ripping his shirt? He needed to get the audience to start cheering to give him the whole powers you're like come on people so that's what i would like it to be but unfortunately what he actually did is kind of very anticlimactic compared to what you would think it is the overturned car he was able to get the person out but um the airbag was deployed so he took out a ballpoint pen poked the airbag and then pulled her out and it was fine nice. <laughs> that is so lame <laughs> Even a pocket knife. <laughs> Fuck Not you. A, <laughs> a ballpoint pen. I'm gonna die. That's, That's awesome. So man. Yes. funny. <laughs> By all appearances, she was unscathed, just really rattled, which is an absolute miracle. That's awesome. Uh, the Tampa what Police a story t- for her too. Yeah. Damn. Police department said in an email there were only minor injuries, but. That's nope. fucking incredible. Hulk man. Hogan tweeted, Thank you, God, all is well, even now. Amen. And he signs off all of his tweets with HH. That's <laughs> awesome, <laughs> man. Uh, uh, Hulkamania is back, baby. Yeah. I'm a fan. Yeah. Hulk Hogan, all is forgiven. And you know what? It's okay that you don't want your daughter to have sex with a black man. <laughs> oh, was that one of his takes? That was one of his oh, takes when he was damn. having sex with Bubba the Love Sponge's wife. Yeah, oh. that was the Hulk Hogan sex tape. He was sleeping with his buddy's wife. This. Yeah. And then he, the guy whose wife he had slept with released the tape. And on the real tape- agent of chaos move. Yes. Right <laughs> <laughs> what? She did her own. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, He's wow, letting sociopath. His wa- let his wife fuck Hulk Hogan, recorded it, and then put it out. Um, <laughs> and I guess it was a kink of theirs to like let she would sleep with guys and they would record it and enjoy it themselves. So I think okay. Hulk Hogan didn't Classic. even know it was being recorded. So he got he thought he was going to be the one who was like fucking them up and he was getting fucked up. Good I don't I think it was kind of like they were in an open marriage. So he just kind of like, well, this will be fun. But okay. didn't know that they record it. And then it got put out because I don't know if this is why it got put out. But in the tape that got real put out. They have sex, and then he's just laying down next to her and talking about how he doesn't want his daughter dating any of these N words. <laughs> That's his pillow talk. <laughs> I mean, she's like, I didn't even come. Yeah. <laughs> now, I have to hear him go on this racist rant. Yeah. <laughs> nice, dude. And uh, yeah, so Hulk Hogan uh, saved Damn. a woman in an overturned car with his 24 inch pythons and a ballpoint pen. Wow. <laughs> That's wow. awesome, man. <laughs> All right. I guess we'll, we'll give him some points back for that. Good job, Hulk Hogan. Yeah. He I was, mean, it was, it yeah. was a white girl in the car, yeah. probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was put Try back again. in the uh, WWE Hall of Fame. Yeah, they like took him out, and then I think quietly kind of put him back in. He's done some things with WWE since. Yeah, it's all good. All it's all good, dude. Yeah, you forgive him, right, Joe? I, I forgave him. He saved that girl's life, dude. Yeah, I, know I can't. Been... I can't stay mad at him, dude. <laughs> he shows that Hulkamania will always run wild, and no matter what, dude, he'll always have a face turn. <laughs> yes, because people are like, oh, he's evil. He doesn't want his daughter to have sex with a black guy. But when they needed him the most, dude, Hulk Hogan returned yes. and saved a child's pen. life, dude. With a, ball a black pen. ballpoint yeah. pen. That's oh, big. Oh, <laughs> an African-American <laughs> ballpoint pen. An African-American. <laughs> <laughs> it was an African-American who saved her. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it was a colored pencil, but that's what he calls all pencils. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Yeah. <laughs> Hulkamania ran wild, brother. Yeah. That's awesome. Damn, that's so fucking cool. <laughs> Have you ever true. saved someone's life, uh, like, as a lifeguard swimming in any way? No, I was a lifeguard, use? but yeah. no, like... I mean, we we would drag people in on occasion, but it always was like drag people. Like, oh, I, I like I was like a beach a lifeguard. lifeguard, and like we'd like pull gotcha. people in sometimes, but it was yeah. like it was never like dire. It was mm. always just like ah, I just got stuck out here. I guess just, yeah, the long term career plan for a swimmer is lifeguarding. Yeah, which uh oh, <laughs> 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 that's not enough. That's tough. Um, 
Yeah, no, no, I've never saved anybody's lives. Have you guys saved anybody's lives? Never, and I would never do that. <laughs> you would never <laughs> save principle. someone's life. Absolutely not. <laughs> Let them die. <laughs> <laughs> they made their choice. That was nature's decision. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who am I to play God? Yes. <laughs> to use it's really a religious thing for me to not save. I, their I lives. really, yeah. yeah. It's like I can't do that. It's not mm. my place. It is funny that like because I trained martial arts a lot growing up, and you would th- people would, they'd tell you like, oh, in a real life situation, you can help save someone or whatever. But in New York City, you just see, you just ignore no. any situation oh, like yeah. that. You can't like, get involved. Yeah, You're it's not too allowed. scary, dude. Yeah, yeah. What if this? What if this black guy starts attacking me? Yeah, you know. Yeah. Like, what is Finney's about to attack something? Yeah, that's He's that's focused like focused up. That's why we got a guard dog. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hell yeah, man. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, thank you so much for having me. This was a thank delight. You. Laura, yeah. where can people find you? They're going to want to see oh, more God. Laura Sogar. Where, you, where well, is the place to go? You can go on Instagram. That's probably the best place. My Just my name, Laura Sogar, S-O-G-A-R. You can follow the pod where we talk shit about businesses and corruption and a lot of celebrities. Um, that's pretty fun. Risque Business News with May Planner. Cool. And uh, come see me live. All right. Awesome. Thank you guys for listening. We'll see you next week. Stick around for the Patreon. Bye. Bye.